Hey guys, how y'all doing? Johnny here, and I'm excited to tell you that today, once again, we will have a live reactions to the game week. Once again, we will show you the live reactions of myself watching the game between Olympique Lyon and Marseille. As you guys do know, we have three Marseille players and it is a massive game when it comes to this game week currently. I am so excited to dive straight into it. Also, quick little interception right there in the video. Just real quick, don't you worry, guys. The link in the description down below is not a referral link anymore. It is actually an affiliate link. Yes, we are now affiliates with SoRare themselves. The difference right here for you is not going to be existent. So if you use the link in the description down below, we, uh, the, the, if you use that one to sign up on so rare, you still get a limited item for free once you win five auctions on the market. So that is still active. But on top of it, from your purchases from now on, if you do go ahead and use the link in the description down below, the creator you support, which would be me in this case, gets 10% of your payout, not your payouts, but like uh, how much you spend on the players on auctions. So that is something that's happening. It's basically like the creator codes that you have on like Call of Duty and stuff. And uh, it really supports the creators a lot. So thank you guys so much. If you do consider using the link in the description down below, there's absolutely no downside to you. You still get the limited item after uh, five game, uh, five, um, not games, but five pickups from the auctions. And I will be able to get 10% off of it, which would allow me to go ahead and bring in even more and better players into our club. Let's continue. Today, boys, it is Caleta Car, Paul Lopez, and Rongier up against Lyon. Uh, and Lyon is not necessarily in a great spot. Lots of injuries. Guimaraes just has left to Newcastle United. They are looking weak, and they are 11th in the league, as Marseille is third. This could be a huge one. But I kind of doubt that there will be a clean sheet for Marseille, which could cause some issues. But if they can pick up a clean sheet, Paul Lopez and Caleta Car could be looking at great points. But generally speaking, this game week that is currently going on, we have Jesus Ferreira for USA against Honduras. Last game he didn't play. Hopefully he gets rotated back into the squad again as the last game he played, they won. The one after where he didn't play, they lost against Canada. So hopefully he'll be playing. And then we have Felix Torres, Peru against Ecuador, third against fourth in the group for World Cup, World Cup qualifiers. And it is a big matchup right there as well. At least hoping for the ETH threshold, but possibly we might be looking into some player rewards if our boys perform to the expected level. 59th position will get you a tier 3 rare. I do wonder if this could finally be the week in which we can pick ourselves up a first ever red or rare reward here coming into the club. But that is not everything. Again, as I mentioned, we will be going through the live reactions, which will be in the later part of this video. I hope you guys will enjoy them. Until then, we're going to be doing some lineup building, baby. And we're going to be doing it for game week 242. Here we are and starting off with the most exciting lineup for the upcoming game week. And I'm telling you guys right now, game week 242 is possibly going to be the biggest for ourselves on this account, on this channel, and in my so rare journey. It has me so, so excited. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. If you guys see any flaws in my lineups, please go ahead and leave your comments down below. I'm no one to say that I'm an expert when it comes to so rare. I'm just extremely passionate about it, and I'm still learning. So if you guys have any thoughts, let me know, as always, in the comments down below if you see some issues. First of all, the goalkeeper is going to be the Kaiser. It is 7th against 8th. It is going to be Utrecht against Kambur. And I don't necessarily know how this matchup is going to go. But technically speaking, the odds are going Utrecht's way. Which I'm hoping it's going to work out for us. But there's something important that we will have to mention about that game itself. It is the fact that Hodemakers, who hopefully will be back from injury, according to some of the people on Discord, he'll be back. He's the best player of Kambur. The last game without him, they lost, I believe. He's going to be back again for the squad. And I have hopefully, uh, I'm hopefully going to be seeing him getting great all-round scores. Even if he loses, hopefully he can get at least 50 points for us in that game week, like he normally does. Back from his injury, he's a player that is actually wanted. Mitiland wanted to sign him, and Kambur said no. He is their best player. They're not letting him go. 
defense. We are going with Theo Hernandez in the derby of Milan. It is Inter against AC Milan. A massive, massive game with who knows what's going to happen. Possibly Inter winning that game as they are first. They are favored to win it. But Theo Hernandez taking free kicks, taking corners, bombing forward constantly. I can easily see him do well in this matchup. And if he does, I'm going to be very excited to see him play for us in the under 23s. Then going into the forwards, as you guys might remember, Openda is still suspended. He has a red card, so I don't know why it doesn't say that he's suspended here, which is a bit of an issue. But if he is able to play, I'll obviously play him. But I do think he's not able to play. So Matondo for Secle Bruges, 8th against 12th. They have just lost their last game. Hopefully, Sacle Bruges will come in with a great match. Again, as you can see, the odds here are very, very even. 38% to 38%. Matondo scored an offside goal in the last match. The match before that, he actually scored an absolute banger. So we're going to go ahead and bring him in from the Sacle Bruges stack into this team. And then on top of it, we're going to go for David Raum, 10th against 7th. Mainz have just lost their last game against Greuther Fürth. And I do think Hoffenheim is going to be picking up in form now with okay matchups coming up for them and hopefully we can see some good points coming in from that squad so here you go the kaiser theo hernandez who the markers matondo david raum that is going to be our under 23 lineup and i'm going to go for a risky play here i'm either going to go for theo hernandez as the captain because he is basically doing everything for ac milan even up to taking penalties for the squad even though he did miss the last one so i don't know if he would take it again uh, because normally Ibrahimovic takes them, but I believe Ibra got injured. So Theo Hernandez might be on penalties. And in games like these, penalties do happen quite often. It is quite a feisty game. So either I give him the captaincy or I give it to Matondo, hoping he scores or gets an assist. So it is a tough choice for me here, but I think I'm going to go for the one where I know he takes set pieces. Theo Hernandez is going to be my captain for the under 23 rares for game week 242. Going into Challenger Europe Rare. This week, we will go for the Sac Le Bruges stack in here, or semi-stack, I should say. We have Sena Miange coming in, or Miange, sorry. Uh, then in the midfield, we're going to go for Anto Grigic, who has been incredible. It is second versus sixth. And in the Swiss League, there are only like 10 teams. So technically, this is a quite a bad matchup. You can see the odds, 67% going Basel's way. But Sion has been on good form, and I'm hoping that they can pick up a decent result there. And even if they lose, Anto Grigic is someone that tends to score decently in all, all around scores. So we'll see how that goes. For the forward, we're going to go for Dino Hotic. This team basically has to rely a lot on the options coming in from Sec Le Bruges. Hopefully this stack is going to come in handy now. The last game for us, they lost. Now they're up against an even harder opponent in Standard Liège. We have some decent players in there and are looking to perform better than they are doing right now. But Sackler hopefully will pick up the pace and perform better for us. If they do so, Hotic is going to be our captain. And uh, it all depends on the team's results right here. Basel against Sion, very hard matchup. Hotic and his boys up against Standard Liège. I don't think we're going to win any rewards with this team, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and try and do so. The Challenger Europe team is set up. For the Champion Europe rare, I am actually quite confident. I'm really looking forward to this one. Paul Lopez, it is going to be third against 12th, and that team that they're up against, I don't think scores a lot of goals. If we go into League A right here, Angers here has 28 goals scored this season with 29 conceded, a negative goal difference. They have lost one game. Again, uh, they've won one game in their last five games, while Marseille is obviously on great form and fighting for the top two spots, looking to get in there with a game in hand. They might push into it just today by winning against Lyon. If they can pull that off, they're back into that second spot and fighting for big results down the line in the Champions League, possibly taking part in there. But yeah, Angers coming in with their squad, which might not be too high scoring, and then you have the best defense in the league with only 16 goals conceded. So I am hoping that my defense of Marseille players are going to hold well here. Paul Lopez in goal, Caleta Car in the defense, along with the midfield maestro that is Rongier to take over his position in that midfield. That stack 
could get us incredibly high points in Champion Rare. Obviously, the Champion Rare Europe is a very tough division to win rewards in. But if possible, I would love to get at least a tier three. That would make me happy. I'm not looking to win the entire division. I just want something out of it if possible. Going into the attack, we once again have somewhat of an interesting matchup. We have Hoffenheim against Mainz. Mainz have just lost their last game against Goethe Fürth. Did not necessarily look good there. And now we're going for Kramaric and of course Geiger, who has, who has returned from his long, long-term injury and is now looking very solid in the Hoffenheim games. I've been watching Hoffenheim games lately a lot, as you guys know. And uh, Geiger looks like a midfield maestro to me. I find his scores to be way too low for what he does on the pitch. He's incredible. And he's still under 23, uh, so we could use him in there. But for now, we're going to use him in the Champion Europe stack. So a semi-stack of Hoffenheim along with a semi-stack of Marseille. Marseille with a much easier easier matchup there. But Hoffenheim with hopefully Kramaric coming back into form they could be looking at a very good game here. Now, for me personally, I'm going to go for Captain C. Oof. Do I go on Kramaric or do I go on Rongier? I don't know. Rongier in his last game got a 65. Depending on how he will do against Lyon today, I will go ahead and make my decision on what I will do with the Captain C. But I am more leaning towards Rongier. But for now, I'm going to pick Kramaric as my captain because if he does score or get an assist, obviously that's like 70 plus uh, points, hopefully. And uh, that is a little bit of a higher upside. So we're going to go for that team in Champion Europe Rare. When it comes down to All-Star Rare, we do not have a complete lineup. We have brought in Lung into the team. We have brought in Felix Torres. Then we do have a player that is not going to have a game. So DNP coming in for Openda. And then for the extra, we do have Musiala. Now... Of course, I can go in and bring in a, a common player to play here, even though it looks like I don't necessarily have one, which <laughs> is not necessarily great. Um, but yeah, um, the mistake I made with Felix Torres, I would like to fix. I would like to swap him out for the defensive version and then bring him in here. And then obviously would be missing an extra because then we would have a defender, a midfielder, a Musiala, a forward, an Openda. And then we can choose anyone that we bring in that has a game to come in here and work for the E threshold. With this team specifically, I'm not looking for winning rewards or anything like that. These are not the best matchups either. Third against 16th, 11th against 7th, 4th against 6th. He is not playing suspended. Bayern Munich against Leipzig being a massive, massive game. Who knows what's going to happen there. So it's not looking too good for the All-Star Rare. I might even completely skip it rather than investing into it once again. But at some point, we will have an all-star rare team that is going to be consistent and playing for those thresholds and maybe even more down the line. But for now, this is what we have. Let me show you the lineup builders here, the, the saved lineups, and you can see all the teams at once. So the all-star rare, around the average, 323 points needed to get a tier three reward. That is probably not going to happen with this team. Going into the Challenger Europe Rare, 281.44 points. I think if the Sac Le Bruges stack performs, even if Basel beat the hell out of Sion, we could still possibly be looking at a Tier 3 Rare. So we'll see how that one goes for ourselves. We just got to bank on a clean sheet and Hottage performing, which obviously is a lot to ask for here. The Champion Europe Rare I am most confident in, but still the average points needed are quite high. So I would need at least a clean sheet for Marseille and a goal or an assist for Kramaric or even Geiger. So we'll see how that goes. It all depends on the performances of the squads, but I do like the matchups in that one. And in the under 23 rare, 23 rare 264 points, which is the lowest amount needed for a tier three rare. Um, I think we can do it. I really do hope we can pull this off because not everyone has a under 23 goalkeeper that plays games and hopefully if they, the signing of the Kaiser will be the right decision for us for this year and also the next year and he can be going along with it and I do think that Hodemakers if he's back from his, his, his injury as people have been telling me we can look at some really really good points here and of course if Matondo steps up and scores in that game or gets an assist that will be huge for this lineup as well but if any of these players are not able to play. Of course, we have Musiala, who we can pop right in there. So Musiala could be coming in for Hudemakers 
if there is an issue. Musiala does tend to get subbed in most of the time, so he could bring in at least like 30 or 25 to 40 points, even if he doesn't score. Uh, and uh, that could be quite good for us as well for the under 23 rare. And uh, yeah, that is how the lineups are looking. I'm extremely excited for it, guys. I can't wait. It's only a couple of days away. But also for this week, as you guys do know, we are currently taking part in it. And I'm so excited to record my live reactions, which you'll see right now at the end of this video. Enjoy. All right, guys, it is time for the live reactions. Your boy has some cake. <laughs> Gonna be watching the game. I need to shave, my God. Anyways, we are going to be watching Marseille against Olympique Lyon today. As you guys do know, we have a uh, a decent lineup for this weekend in terms of all-star rare. And um, we want rewards, ideally. And for that to happen, I need Marseille to have a clean sheet. So every time Olympique Lyon attacks, I'm going to have a hard attack. But if we can do well and if Rongier can have a good game here in midfield... We could be looking good. So we do have Jesus Ferreira, Caleta Car, and oh, sorry, no, uh, Caleta Car, Paul Lopez, and Rongier in the squad. Two defenders basically who rely on the clean sheet, and Rongier who relies on good passing play. Wish me luck. Here comes the live reaction. Olympique Lyon is weakened like crazy right now, and I'm really, really hoping that things will be going our way. So the game begins. It looks like Marseille will be playing with four at the back with Camara as a CDM. Rongier coming in a little bit more offensive this time around alongside Genduzi. Genduzi has been having some quite decent games lately. Obviously, he's a hothead, so we'll see what happens. And the first minute, I'm already seeing Paul Lopez up in the midfield <laughs> trying to get involved in the attack. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Um, obviously, Olympique Lyon completely weakened. They are playing with Emerson, the left back at left wing. They are playing Ryan Cherki. Uh, the, their biggest talent technically in the striker position. So I don't know what I can expect from him up against both of our defenders. Of course, he's a great dribbler of the ball. Paul Lopez already taking part in the game here, just shifting the ball across the pitch. It looks like uh, Marseille slowly pinning down Lyon in the first couple of minutes. But nonetheless, uh, Lyon are coming in with the defense of Lukeba, Boateng and Dubois. So we'll see how all of that goes. Hopefully, this will be a banging game for us, boys. I am so excited. You can immediately tell that Olympique Lyon is actually playing to not lose. They are sitting extremely deep against this Marseille squad, full well knowing that their squad is just inferior by the way they are set up here. In the midfield, when I'm looking at the numbers there, it looks like Marseille should have the upper hand. Despite uh, Olympique Lyon only playing with three at the back, straight away, there is a foul in the third minute that could lead to a yellow card. Camara gets taken out. But um, generally speaking, immediately, the vibes are that Marseille is going to be the team pushing for the win. Obviously, Lyon not having fans in the stadium. They don't have an advantage there. And uh, it's going to be awkward for them to play in front of no fans. Free kick from Dimitri Payet. Coming in well. And it lands right in front of Kamara, who hits it just above the top right of the goal itself. The entire defense went back. A header goes straight into Kamara's feet. He hits it on the volley and he just doesn't hit it down. It goes up ever so rising. Also, guys, this was something that some of you guys asked for. You can see it on a screen. I'm currently moving it around like crazy, but... Now you will have the score line in the top left as well. I hope, I, I really hope you guys like the setup now. <laughs> it doesn't look amazing, uh, don't get me wrong, but it is helpful to let you know what is going on in general in the game. One thing I'm immediately noticing is that Paul Lopez is always available for a pass from his center backs. Like he's a, go he's like a playing goalkeeper. You can immediately tell he's sitting very high on the pitch right now which could lead to some dangerous counterattacks, possibly, if he doesn't get back into his position fast enough. But generally speaking, Paul Lopez, his all-round scores are probably going to be very, very good here because he just constantly is available for the passing play in between the centre-backs. Another thing that I just noticed is that Caleta Car, if that's the right way of pronouncing him, probably Chaleta Jar or Chaleta Tsar or something like that. Anyways... He is like two-footed. He, he plays passes left, right. It doesn't really matter. I like that a lot about him. Another corner coming in now. Genduzi waiting for it at the near post. He gets it. Genduzi scores. 1-0. 
Olympique Marseille. Now, Dimitri Payet with the cross, Genduzi with the goal. Question is, what does that mean? You guys see it on your screen as well. Yeah, there you go. So it is 1-0 right now. My question here is, how does this impact Olympique Marseille? I really hope they don't just sit back now and allow Lyon to have the ball to go ahead and try their best to score themselves. Because if they do sit back, I think there might be some issues. I think attack might be the best defense in this sense. So hopefully we can see a bit more offensive moves coming in for Marseille. Early goals like these do tend to completely change the game. Haye with the assist, as always, that man gets such high scores. And that, by the way, puts Olympique Marseille into the second spot in the league, ahead of Nice once again, who have won their last five games. Great pass, Saliba. Great recovery, man. Love that. Well done. It was a huge chance just now. It was actually saved by Paulo Lopez in a 1v1 situation. That should give him nice points. A ball through to the right back. Gusto, I think his name is. He ran through, so did not personally enjoy that one bit. So please don't do that again. Guys, I've actually just realized that the fop mob thing is a little bit ahead of time of my life uh, game here that is supposed to be live, but it seems like FOTMOP is getting their stats a little bit earlier. They're like 20 seconds ahead of me. So I'm actually going to take down the FOTMOP thing because I don't want to be spoiled. I want to give you guys my live reaction. So that's just a heads up for me. So maybe one thing I can do is I can go ahead and bring this down, do, do this right there, just so you guys... We'll see the score line because that doesn't update as quickly. What I don't like here is even though I do want Marseille to continue attacking, um, the midfielders are a bit too high up the pitch. So as soon as the defenders make a mistake and lose out on the ball in the midfield when they push up, especially players like Kamara who carry the ball forward from CDM into the midfield and the attack, when he loses the ball... Players like Rongier and Genduzi are a bit too far away. So that's not good. That, that's not good. Marseille got to make sure that the gap between defense and attack is a little bit closer. At least that's something um, that I've realized just now. They seem to be stretched out a little bit too much when they're building up things. Because if the pass doesn't arrive at the feet, immediately Olympique Lyon has a chance to counter. And I don't like that so far. That has that has been something that they have been using to their advantage so far, definitely. And now that, we're, that they're 1-0 up, a little bit more caution would be nice, even though I do want him to still go on an attack. Great pass from Saliba into Rongier. Rongier, great ball through. Come on. Oh, yes. Shoot. No. Ah, uh, oh, mate, that was really well done by Rongier. Great attack started. Genduzi goes for like a weird shot. A volley type shot, 18 minutes in. Marseille with another chance. Great pass by Rongier to start off the entire attack. That should be counting as a key pass for sure. Oh, great pass by Payet. Camara carrying the ball forward now. Going down the left with Enrique. Enrique has Genduzi in support. Plays it. Nice passing. The movement is broken down though. And now Olympique Lyon is playing good pressure. Like, they are not doing too bad there. Honestly, I have to admit, there's some good pressure coming in from Olympique Lyon. Despite their lineup not looking that great, they're doing a good job in terms of pressuring them, pressuring them when they have the ball in the midfield. Oh, Lyon might be through here. Ooh, okay. All right. And it's, it's exactly what I'm kind of fearing here, the thing that's happening in this game. It's the fact that Marseille are kind of happy with what they have pulled off so far. Rongier is making great attacking runs, by the way, but no one's necessarily looking for him there, which is a bit of a shame. Great pass by Rongier. Paye lets it fall back. Now, Under again, back to Rongier. He's getting a little bit more touches on the ball now, which I like. I, I think he should be a little bit more central. Like, he needs to be a little bit more down in that spot where he's in right now. He he does play somewhat of like a number eight in the right side of Marseille's squad. But I feel like if he would drop a little bit deeper, just a little bit more, he could be helping with the link-up play for the attacks uh, rather than making those runs in behind constantly and hoping for someone to put it through. It's not necessarily an ideal setup for Rongier. I think he's better suited 
in that center midfield role, box to box type thing, rather than too offensively focused. Oh, beautifully done by Rongier. Here's a beautiful attack. Come on then. Is that Rongier? No, Lirola, Lirola, what are you doing? What are you doing, Lirola? Marseille were through. They were absolutely through there. Ah, oh, mate, on the right-hand side, they run through 2v3 type of situation, and Lirola messes it up. He scuffs it, and Lukeba clears it. Under did a great job there alongside Genduzi, all coming down the right for Marseille. That seems to be the side that is causing the most trouble so far. Unreal pass. Saliba, what a tackle. Incredible. Olympique Lyon, we're nearly through there. Now the counter. Rongier over two. Under, Under. Not necessarily passing it back into him, but man, Saliba has incredible pace. Unreal. Like, there was a through ball being played through. And the Olympique Lyon player looked like he was through, but Saliba's pace, the recovery on him is unreal. Well done. He looks very good. Uh, he's the most impressive one so far throughout this entire game. Kamara, what a pass into the attack now. Lirola coming in with the cross. Dude, Genduzi is always at the striker position. I don't know what this guy's on about, but he's not playing like a center mid at all. He's like at striker all the time. The one time where Lyon looked dangerous is when... Gusto, their right back, moves forward. He has incredible pace on him and constantly gets into 1v1 situations where he actually beats the defender that he's up against. And that is a very, very scary thing for that Marseille defense. I think this game, so far after 42 minutes, has been quite boring. I'll have to admit. But I do think in the last, like, 15 to 20 minutes... A couple of big moments are definitely going to be coming around as Lyon goes all out attacking at that point because they just can't take a loss at home like that. That would be a that be a terrible result for themselves. It has been quite a slow game ever since uh, Marseille have scored the goal. It has all slowed down big time. And here it is. The first half has been blown off. I can say for Lyon, Gusto is the main player that looks dangerous. For Marseille, Genduzi, for some reason, playing number nine. <laughs> He's the one that is constantly getting involved in the attacks and really wants to get forward. You can tell every time the team is moving forward, he's sprinting and he loves it. But generally speaking, Rongier not necessarily taking part in the build-up play enough. He is down on that right centre midfield spot where he's barely really doing anything, uh, which I hope is not going to lead to him getting subbed off but uh, it's great to see that the clean sheet is still there despite a couple of chances for Lyon. That last chance from Cherki that was called offside wasn't offside. So thankfully Saliba came in with a great tackle because that might have actually slotted right into the bottom left corner. But here we go. First half done. Second half. Let's go. Second half has begun and I'm seeing an interesting shift in the lineup. Over the top through ball. Caleta clears it. Well done. Well done. Saliba and the boys now defending that well. Playing it out of defense. Rongier getting involved. <sighs> I'm very scared of this clean sheet, honestly. <laughs> it's all about that clean sheet, please. Lyon now through again down that right-hand side. Caleta clears it. Well done. Well done. Gusto gets it back again down the right. He's getting past Luis Enrique so easily. This kid is very good. I might buy this Gusto guy. I mean, the thing is, though, fullbacks are... They don't score well. It would be a little bit of a waste of money, I think. But nonetheless, Dimitri Payet gets kicked in the chest by Boateng. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Kaleta Kar heads it into Shakiri, but then as Shakiri pushes towards him, he clears that one easily. Leon now inside the box. Genduzi does really well there to get it out. And now there could be a counter if the boys play this well. Lirola has no options. Needs to play it back inside. Genduzi has the ball. Plays it back to Rongier. And down the right we go again. Ah, oh, mistakes were made. No, please. Mistake in the build up. And Saliba. Let's go, Saliba. Oh my god, what a tackle. Dimitri Payet with an incredible through ball. Luis Enrique. 1v1. Go for it, pal. 
Genduzi is gonna have a chance to shoot. Oh my god, what a horrible shot. Shakiri pushing towards the box. Kaleta, beautiful tackle. Again, that's gonna be some nice points for him there. Defenders are the outstanding performers here for Marseille for sure. They're shutting down Lyon very well. It's just that there's always that looming danger. I feel like it's not 100% secure. Especially with those runs that uh, some players are making behind the defense. Their passing play from Lyon. Moving into those types of positions has not been good enough, though, to get something out of it. Augusto again. Paul Lopez comes out and gets it. Well done. That Gusto kid, man, he's a problem. That guy in a better team could be very dangerous, especially a team that likes attacking fullbacks. Rongier down the right. Camara. Awful pass from Camara. A long shot coming through from halfway line. Ryan Cherki tries to beat Paul Lopez, but he doesn't hit the target. Still dangerous, though. Ah, Lyon now. Playing well. Saliba clears it again. Oh, my God, mate. This is what I'm scared of. Only 1-0. They just constantly keep pushing for it. If this game was like 3-0, they wouldn't try as hard because obviously they would know, yeah, this game's kind of over. But now Dembele comes on. Dembele comes on for Lyon. He comes on for Emerson Palmieri, who used to play left midfield here for, uh, for, Mas um, for Lyon. I don't know how this is going to impact the game, but now they have a number nine and this could be dangerous. Uh, Marseille with easy mistakes in the build-up now. They're getting a bit sloppy. I don't like that. Oh, here we go. Cengiz Under is through. Under down the right. Paye in the center. Cengiz goes for the shot. What am I looking at? He tries to finesse it towards the far post on his left foot and bottles it. He would have been offside anyways, but still, man. Marseille making a change now. It's Luis Enrique coming off, who has been very quiet for Harit. Harit offensively class, defensively awful. So, don't know what to expect from this. Enrique did help somewhat in that defense, so hopefully we can see... Had it possibly go on the counter and get the second goal for Marseille to shut this game down. But we'll see how that goes. He goes down that left wing position now. And uh, that's one of the only good substitutions to possibly come into the game now for Marseille. There's not that many left. <gasps> Caleta! What the hell, Caleta card? Paul Lopez with two huge, huge, absolutely massive saves. Caleta nearly played the ball into the feet of Musa Dembele and said, go ahead and score. Honestly, that looked horrible from Galeta. But Paulo Lopez with two huge saves, making sure that the team doesn't concede. Come on, man, concentrate. Nah, Marseille, I don't know what it is, but they've lost concentration. They've lost the drive to chase down the opponents as they did. And Caleta is having huge problems with uh, with Dembele. Dembele is out muscling Caleta. And he is targeting him, it looks like. He's not necessarily pushing towards Saliba at all. He's just constantly on Caleta's side. Putting him in on his back and uh, forcing that battle. Well done, Rongier. Uh, Marseille's playing hoof it up the pitch now. I don't like that. I don't like that. They're constantly giving possession to Lyon and just sitting back. What happened to the good football that you guys showed in the first half? I mean, good, somewhat decent, you know? Oh, no. Oh, man, that's unreal. Freaking Shakiri scores a header. Oh, mate. Horrible defending. How can you justify leaving out a man that's like five foot two to score a header? My entire lineup is ruined now, man. Honestly, it's just completely ruined. No offside. It's of course it's Gusto. Of course it's Gusto. Who else? Gusto coming in with a cross. And he's completely open. He's completely open in the center at the penalty box, uh, at the penalty spot. 
and he just goes for a header against the run of Paul Lopez. No chance for Paul Lopez. Goal conceded 1-1. It's done. I I'm finished. There you go. I'm finished, man. Unreal. And immediately, Kaleta Kar and Paul Lopez drop by 20 points. Yes. If it continues like this, Marseille is going to lose this game. I'm going to tell you straight away. If it goes on like this right here, it's a definite loss for Marseille. Because they are, they have fallen asleep. After scoring the first goal, completely fallen asleep. Especially in the second half, showcasing a terrible performance defensively. Not paying enough attention. It's just been Saliba making the clearances. And there is Dembele with a chance. <sighs> 11 minutes to go. <gasps> Moussa Dembele just ruined... The defense of Marseille in the most incredible way. It's 2-1. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. They played for offside. Marseille played for offside, which they have done many, many times in this game. And every time it looked shaky. And it was an offside. He gets behind the defenders, lobs the keeper. It's 2-1. Was he offside? Please tell me he was. He wasn't. He's not offside. Saliba plays him on. Unreal. Mate, that is just a joke, isn't it? I can't believe what I'm seeing. Honestly, I'm shocked. Well, I'm going for the threshold then. That is us looking very bad, boys. Yep, that's my game week done. All three players combined add up for only 141 points after that goal being conceded just now. Ah, that's... I don't know what to say, honestly. But at the same time, it wasn't going to be an easy game. It is Olympique Lyon after all. And I honestly thought... After that first goal and the way that Marseille was playing, it was going to be easy for them. But Lyon has shown a lot of ability in this game. Despite missing out on so many players, they have gone ahead and won this one, which is huge. Mistake by Boateng, though. And Payet just passes it back to the keeper. Don't know what the hell just happened there, but this game is over. Referee blows the whistle in a second. There we go. And that's it. Massive win for Lyon. Can't believe what I've just watched there. Unreal. That's the live part of this video done. I'm going to go ahead and cry now.